Hello everyone, and today I'm going to be doing a review over the Erlikos Fix family tree today. So, I'm going to go ahead and start off with, of course, Erlikosaurus Gen 2. Right, they pull out Archaeopteryx. So, as you can see, Erlikos Fix, no, Erlikosaurus Gen 2 has Depolity and Distraction, Precise Rampage, and Minimal Speed Up Strike, a pretty typical Therizinosaur, builds and it actually works really well especially the podium distraction i do wish it was only two turn cooldown but given it has 75 percent distraction resistance i can see why it has a three turn cooldown instead but still, oh my gosh that is nuts and also due to having a high speed of 130 i'm fairly certain it's 130 with that minimal speed of strike it actually gets pretty quick and pretty fast I mean, temper. I mean, ten percent speed increase. So you're like one hundred and forty nine, if not no, actually not one hundred forty nine, but uh, one hundred thirty three right now. Wait, what? No, that was sloth. Sorry, that wasn't me. Darn. But I can still potentially do. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and distract him, or he swaps to Magendasaurus. Okay, I guess I'll take that. I mean, hey, it at least nullifies his counter a little. Unfortunately, not much. Ow! 311, even with the 75%. It hurts, but this hurts some more. <laughs> now, priority! Priority E. Uh, I'm not sure. Airline companies be like. Precise rampage. Boom. Oh! <laughs> the crit. Oh, ow, that poor sloth. He was not ready for that. And as you see, we win. Now, Erlikus makes. Uh, Erl Erlikosaurus Nintu is actually fairly decent. Like, cunning, especially with the Pelodating Distraction, that is stupid good. And on its, on its hybrid, or like a Gamma, that thing is nuts. Because it can just shut down any fierce damage. Like, it's crazy what it can do. Alright, now I start off with Very Young Gen 2. But against the Very Young Gen 2. Ooh, okay, this is ridiculous. Why the heck are we copying each other so much? I, I swear, if he goes for Defense Shattering Impact... Bruh. Bruh. Oh, come on! Really? Just had to get a crit, eh? Just had to get a crit. Oh, there we go. There's my crit. Don't even need it, but there's mine. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I guess ready to crush. Alright, I I'm just hoping the AI is, is stupid and as usually they are and it goes adrenaline pulse. So let's see, does he do it? No, bruh. Come on, you gotta prove my point wrong. That fast? Really? Alright, time to pull out a Rekus Fix. Now Rekus Fix itself is is ridiculously good, especially for a non exclusive cunning. Like, it is a powerhouse. High health, high damage, high speed, good crit chance, other than armor, but still, it's it's very good for cunning. Like, I, it's... Like, on a pure cunning scale, it's, like, the second best right below uh, Gorgotrebex. That's, I mean, Gorgotrebex is an apex. And he still doesn't add the speed over Relicospex. And I'm fairly certain that, actually, Relicospex beats um, Gorg um, Gorgotrebex... Um, yeah, it, on re on revenge it would, but that's on revenge. Hmm. Other than that, Burger Trix actually would win. So that's really interesting. But as you can see, we got a little away mouth from that. Yeah. All right, so. Did overall with um, or like a Gen two is actually kind of unique for cunning because it's one of the few that actually can distract more than 50% in a single go that still deals damage 
But back to Burying Instant 2. Burying Instant 2 is definitely more of a raid creature. The raid to crush kind of kills any vi like the problem with raid to crush is that it does zero damage. And while it bumps you for your next turn, again, it's a turn where you deal zero damage. It's just not great for PvP. It's not bad either, but it's not great. I'd rather just not. I'd rather go for Osha Strike if I'm being completely honest. It's only good for raids. Raids is where it's amazing, though. Because, you know, you buff your entire team. However, outside of raids, it's not very good. That's kind of what kills Barry Austin too, and to a lesser extent, anything with that ready crush, simply due to the fact that it does no damage. Now, Barry Gen 2's other two moves are decent, especially when you buff them with ready to crush. They're actually pretty good, but and its resistance is actually really good with having it both speed decrease and vulnerability immune. So that's really helpful in this meta. But, anyways, now he's bad. Back to Lurkasaurus Gen 2. And once again, you know, that minimal speed up strike really helps, you know, against other cunnings. Kind of. Precise Rampage really destroys other cunnings. It actually has really high damage. So, it can still do a beating to uh, Resilient or Fierce. It's only, it's only resistance is bleed by 50%. So, that's not very good, but it's still something. And I don't mind that. Although Bleed isn't too prevalent these days, unfortunately. However, uh, now we're on to score. Now we're on to Spinosaurus Gen 2. And it, it, like, it's actually a really kind of nice Bleed. It, I would much prefer it if it had Deceleration Immunity like other Spinosaurus should. I, I do think Spinosaurus should in general have, or just Bleeders mostly should have, some kind of Deceleration Resistance or Immunity. Simply due to the fact that, you know, they're supposed to, you know, tank... Well, they're supposed to take out tanks. So having those vulnerabilities would really... Well, immunities, sorry, not vulnerabilities. Having those immunities would actually really help them out. So, let's go ahead and do more battles. So, when I pull up next. Yeah, overall, with Spinosaurus, it's your standard bleeder... But with a little bit of cleansing in there to help it out against Cunning, I guess. And Resilient, actually, if it has enough hit points. It's, well, this is not good. Back to Baryonyx Gen 2. Once again, Rated Crush dealing no damage. Which means that now... I mean, I would have barely survived, but I would have been alive. But now I am dead. However, had I done some damage... Well, you know, like with Ferocious Strike, I might be in better... Well, the Kindrosaurus would be in worse shape. However, again, it does no damage, and so it really doesn't help that much. Now we get on the Spinonyx, however. And Spinonyx, while it looks like it's the typical bleeder, it definitely isn't, because it's it's literally designed to just murder tanks. It has that minimum it has that minor rending attack, it has lethal wound, precise, and definite rampage. Precise and definite rampage aren't really as good for taking out tanks. It's due to its low damage, but it's that lethal wound and that minor rending counter that just destroy it. Oh, now it does. You're in close. Come on. But, you know, that's the, that's the one thing I kind of like and dislike about Spinonix is that you don't have a reliable strike. It's rend. So while it can be good, it can also really be detrimental, especially if you have something with rend resistance so you're forced to use those rampages, which, I mean... I just don't care for spine like I, I don't care for definite rampage. Precise rampage is fine. That's actually pretty good. Definite rampage sucks because you rarely actually use that definite part. You usually use the defense shattering because not many things have dodge, and the things that do have dodge usually also have some kind of distraction, or they can you know already cleanse bleed or are immune to it. So there's really no point in having definite rampage at all, and I'd actually prefer it either A, losing the, the extra turn of cooldown, or B, just having it change to defense shattering. I mean, I mean that's just... That's just my opinion, at least. But I, I'd, I'd really prefer that, you know, Spinax can get those. Right. And again, like the Spinosaurus Gen 2, it really should be able to take this guy on better. 
even at higher levels, simply due to the fact that, you know, it's a tank. Should be countered by Spino Man, or Spinosaurus, and while it technically is countered, it's not count it it just it doesn't do enough to help counter it. Bonk. I mean, sir, I, I should have gotten that extra hit. It should have deceleration resistance or immunity. All right, I'm gonna pull up Ariana Austin too, and I'm gonna so he now it should go bellow. Or not. But again, I mean, I could have striked, you know, however, if I had ready to crush, well, sorry, ferocious strike over ready to crush, I would have killed it. Or it would have gone bellow. Either one works with me, but, I mean, really, it just, come on. Like, I can see why it doesn't do damage. But, I mean, really? Really, Lydia? <laughs> I mean, it's also, you know, why can't it do damage? Why shouldn't it do damage? Like, Heck, I don't even mind making it, you know, like 66% of the damage because then it just gets buffed to, you know, one one uh, damage and just have it for three attacks. That way it's not, you know, another group ferocity strike, but better because the thing sucks. All right, now on to the main main thing, though. Like a, like a Spix, very powerful cunning and very dangerous if you if you don't have anything to counter it. It, I mean, it has distraction immunity, it has bleed immunity, it has swap prevention immunity, I think. It also has stun resistance of 66%, I think. It might be actually 75, but I'm going to go with 66. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And that's really good. And it and it's really an awesome counter to Thor. So if you can get it in Aviary, definitely do. It's worth picking up simply due to the amount of Thors there. But... Overall, just strong as hell cunning. It's, it is really good for a cunning. That's saying something because most cunnings suck. But with him, it's actually really, really good. Now, I'm talking pure cunning here. Not, you know, cunning fierce or cunning resilient. Although most of those do also not fare that well. But, I mean, there's still some, but... I mean, it's just that. Ur Urlicus, when it comes to non-Apexes, Urlicus Pix is probably the single best cunning in the game right now. Simply the fact that, again, high bulk, high damage, and high speed, along with great resistances. Plus, you know, a bunch of distraction. And now that vulnerability is ma a major staple in this game, it's actually not too bad. It's not the best to run, it's... But it's certainly no slouch. It'll pull its weight for a while. So, I definitely, I would definitely, if you do get it early on, I would definitely recommend at least trying it out and see if you like it because it is good for, again, for a cutting. It's not great in the meta right now because, again, you know, a bunch of resilience around or like a specs is still going to get bodied hard, but it's not too bad. It's, it's kind of neat. I mean, it has its uses. It definitely has its uses here and there, especially if you're seeing, like, Thor or Mortem Rex. Well, Mortem Rex is kind of iffy because Cleansing Impact. But it can survive one Cleansing Impact, even on a crit. As long as you're full health. The problem is, is you know, the swap -ins. It does get hurt by the swap -ins, but due to having stun resistance, it's still pretty decent against them. Plus, it also has instant distraction just in case you really need to get a GL free card. You can pop that and boom, good. Success. Three out of three. Overall, the the Erlicus Pix family is co comes from a bunch of either... It, it, it's kind of a weird mix, because it's a buffer, it's a bleeder, and then it's, you know, this uh, cunning Therizinosaur that has a great distraction, and they all mix together to make a very strong, very sturdy cunning. Anyways, guys, enjoy this video. Thank you for watching.